All right. Hallelujah. God bless everybody. Bless everybody. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Coming in for the November 2020 prophetic word. I'm going to release this word the Lord has given me. Uh, last night I was praying and fasting and I was actually preparing for the school of the prophets. What the Lord is going to have me start doing a school of prophets. And as I was, the Lord poured this, downloaded this uh, prophetic word for November to the body of Christ. So I'm going to go ahead and release it here for November 2020. God bless everybody coming over here on Facebook on the right. And we got Periscope over here on the left. God bless everybody. Bless everybody. God bless you. Uh, God bless you, everybody coming in. Hallelujah. And so I was just um, um, speaking that the Lord had had me preparing that I'm going to be doing a school of prophets really soon. It'll probably be on Zoom. Um, there will probably be, you know, um, you know, a small charge for that. But, uh, you know, it'll be a, a, a major school of prophets. So it'll be online, probably on Zoom. So I'll be talking about that. Uh, a little later this week, but the Lord has downloaded a powerful prophetic word for the month of November for the body of Christ. Oh, everybody over here on Facebook, God bless you over here on Periscope. And so, uh, we're just going to pray in real, real quick here. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. We just thank you that you're divine, God, that you speak from heaven, that you, you don't want your children to not know what is happening. Father, we thank you that you send prophets, you send dreams, visions, uh, you speak in simultudes because your thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are your ways above our ways. So, God, you want to speak, and you speak to us through your prophets. And so, Father, I thank you as I yield myself as your conduit, as your prophet today. I thank you, God, for releasing this word to the body of Christ. Uh, Lord, let it let it be used to advance the body of Christ, that they can get stronger. We can go to the next level in the month of November. Uh, even as you began to download to me the uh, 2021 prophetic word, uh, as we set up in November, the Lord said, as it was last year, if you guys saw that I put up the 2020 prophetic word that the Lord actually downloaded in 2020 in, uh, uh, in uh, 2019 for November. And so um, the Lord is saying that we're going to get ready to walk into a powerful time uh, before the year 2021. So I thank you, Father, for just speaking. I put myself behind the cross. I ask you, the Holy Spirit, uh, to speak this word out. Uh, in Jesus mighty name and we thank you for it God in Jesus name and so um, the Lord is speaking for November there's quite a few notes and I want you to uh, look on the I put all the scriptures up it took me about a, a 45 minutes alone just to write up all the scriptures um, because you know the, the Lord speaks to me not only through the rhema but the logos and so the written word and so I want you to know that a prophetic word should line up to the written word uh, you know, there's things that God prophesies that's outside the word, of course, at a rhema, and he's speaking a lot of those things tonight. But it'll also line up with the written word because I'm giving you a lot of scripture so that you can take the, the, the written word and everything that's being preached and prophesied and declared and decreed tonight, and you can look it up in the word of God, and as you look it up in the word, God is going to make it a rhema. He's going he's gonna to blow on it, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the true spirit of holiness, it says Jesus Christ uh, was declared to be the Son of God with power by the true spirit of holiness, Romans 1, 4, and 5. And so you'll see that from the resurrection from the dead. And so um, God is also one who is speaking things from heaven, and he's calling those things that be not as they, though they were, hallelujah, uh, Romans 4, 17. And so November is, is a month, the Lord is saying, that we're going to start to hear Divine words from heaven, d divine decrees from heaven, uh, and the, the, this is the month of November, the Lord said, that our words coming out of our mouth are going to begin to line with God's words from heaven, okay? So it's going to be a divine alignment happening, says the Lord, in November, okay? God is going to begin to speak those, calling those things that be not as though they were in our lives, Romans 4, 17. And God said, as we pick that up in the realm of the Spirit, we have to be looking and seeing and listening. We have to be in the secret place. As we pick it up in the realm of the Spirit, the Lord said that we will be able to degree a thing, Job 22, 28, and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon our way. So as our words begin to line up with God's word, 
not only his written word, it should line up with the Logos written word, but I'm talking about uh, words and decrees and declarations coming from the court of heaven. Literally right now, words are coming, but God says the words of our mouth have to line up with his words. Okay, so a lot of people aren't getting manifestation of things the Lord is saying because your your words are not lining up with God's words. And this is what God said. This divine alignment is going to happen in November. I'm going to teach my people, especially apostles and prophets, beginning with you, how to align your declarations with my words coming from heaven, your decrees and your prophecies. The Lord said, I'm going to give you power in your mouth to prophesy your own destiny, to prophesy your own future. And I'm going to show you some things in the word where this is where God taught prophets how to prophesy in their own future. Listen, it was by the word of Elijah, first uh, King 17. He said, by my word, there shall not be rain uh, for these next three years. So he didn't say by the word of the Lord. He said by the word of the prophet, my own word, right? So it's not that we're always trying to get God to answer our prayers or what we are saying. It is that God said, if you speak, I will answer what you speak. I, I will, I will, I will, uh, you command me, you, me, there talks about in Isaiah, he says, command ye me, ask me of things to come of my sons and daughters, right? So he says, command you me. So the Lord is saying, as you speak, you don't have to sit and wait for me to speak. You can to speak, you can prophesy, you can put things in order. And the Lord is saying, since Rosh Hashanah, and I'm not even looking at my notes yet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have your way on this line. Uh, uh, since Rosh Hashanah, there is a divine alignment of time that is happening. The Lord said there's something different about the Hebrew calendar when Rosh Hashanah is the real New Year. The Jewish New Year is the real New Year. New Year, And as that lines up with the Gregorian calendar that we go by, the Lord said there is actually a space of time in there between Rosh Hashanah and uh, 2021 one or every year we see that we can actually speak things and prophesy things that will happen supernaturally there's a space of time the lord said that you can prophesy your own destiny you can speak your own future and the lord said i will align with you says the spirit of the most high god and so in november this is when you're going to begin to start speak these things and it was according to the word of the prophet so prophets you got power in your mouth second king 6 17 through 18 uh let's look at all these different things i want to start out with let's get it in the scriptures real quick um let's start out with uh first kings let's talk about elijah first and then we'll talk about elisha his you know a lot of people say elisha but it's really elisha okay it's really how you pronounce it just like a lot of people called micaiah micaiah the uh micaiah you know, is there's a different pronunciation in the Hebrew, but that's not important. So we know who the prophets are, right? Elijah, First Kings 17. Uh, let's look at that first, because I'm going to be going out of a lot of Second Kings chapter six. But First Kings 17. Let's look at that first. First Kings 17, one, and then we'll go from there into First Kings 13 and 16. Here's what Elijah said. Elijah the Tishbite, and he shows up out of nowhere. Here this prophet is that comes out of nowhere. And the Lord said, there's a lot of uh, prophets that are going to come out of nowhere in the month of, of, of November and December. You've been hidden out in a cave. See, it was Elijah that was, that the Lord told him, hallelujah, to get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith. And there, uh, that is before Jordan. Okay, so a lot of times God will hide you, hide the prophet for a while, but and let the ravens feed you. Notice that uh, the the ravens brought him a uh, 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 food, you know, and he drank of the brook until the brook dried up. That means that God was providing for the prophet while he was in hiding, why the prophet was in training. God is providing for that prophet, right? And so this is what. Uh, and he's training that prophet to hear his voice. He's training the prophet to obey him. And notice it wasn't until the brook dried up that he said, Arise and go to the widow of Zarephath, where there was provision set up, even though this woman, this widow woman, didn't even have anything but two sticks, a little oil, and a little bit of meal that she was about ready uh, to make, and her and her son were about ready to eat and, and die. Okay, but we know that story. But I, I want to focus more on the story that how the, the power of of the word of the prophet, God will honor that. It's not always that we're waiting for, for an answer from God. God is waiting for us to speak. 
Okay, so speak to that mountain and be thou removed and cast it in the sea, right? Jesus said, speak to things, right? So it is about us speaking in, in heaven aligning with our words. Also, it's not always us praying and waiting for God. So I thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, 1 Kings 17, 1, he says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, uh, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God liveth, of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Okay, he didn't say according to the word of God. He said according to my word, because I have confidence that I am aligned with God. I'm a prophet of God. He's chosen me, apostle, apostles on here, prophets, prophetesses. God has chosen me, so I have confidence that I'm already aligned with God. I've already keeping his commandments. I'm already, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, right? And so I'm already keeping his commandments. So we know First John 4, uh, 14 and 15 says, this is the confidence that we have if we ask anything. In his name, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the petitions that we have desired of him. So if we're aligned already to God's will, then we can speak things and decree things. So Elijah said, according to my words. Now I want you to look at 1 Kings 17, 13 through 16. I'll, I'll skip the, the widow of Zarephath, but I'm going to go back a little bit to that story because I put all the scriptures up. But this is stuff that you're going to study in November to really catch this in the realm of the spirit. Okay, 1 Kings 17, 13 through 16. He says this, uh, and Elijah said un unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, and make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, uh, and after make for thee and thy son, and he says this, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of milk shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Notice that that declaration that till the Lord sends rain upon the earth was something that he said, right? That I'm, I, until I say it. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and her and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Hallelujah. Uh, and then we look over here a little bit. Now let's look over here. I want to go over to Eli Elisha or Elisha. Some people say the prophet, his protege. Let's look what he did. Second Kings 4 verse 2 through 7. Uh, and we'll look a couple things that he was speaking that were coming to pass very quickly. Uh, let's look over here real quick. Second Kings chapter, Second Kings chapter 4 or 6, excuse me. Second uh, Kings chapter 6. Hallelujah. And so notice here that this is this is what he was saying, just like there was a miracle of provision, and that's also part of this prophetic word. There's going to be miracles of multiplication and provision, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. I want to set the groundwork first. Um, and this is because once you speak things and things begin to happen, because God aligns with your word, Romans 4, 17, and then God begins to quicken the dead things and call it those things that be not as though they were, right? And this is the faith that Abraham had. But we'll get into that in a minute. So he says, Second Kings 6, uh, and here was uh, wives of the sons of the prophets that the creditors, uh, let me see if I'm on the right story. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, too straight for us. Go pray thee unto the Jordan. Take thee every one and beam. Okay, let's keep on moving here. So I'm going to go over Second Kings chapter 6, but also I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, Second Kings chapter 4. Okay, so 2 Kings chapter 4 is where Elisha comes to this uh, widow, I mean this woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet, prophets, her husband dies, she's in debt, here Elisha tells her what to do, verse 3, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3, then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors and empty them vessels, borrow not a few, and when that are come into thy house, shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out unto thee uh, these vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door and her upon her and her sons and she brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Verse 7, mark this down. Then she said and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay the debt and live thou and thy children on the debt, on the on the proceeds. And so 
God is saying that is multiplication, but also can be spoken out of the mouth of the prophet. See, many things God honored that Elisha and Elijah, Elisha both were speaking. Notice this. It goes, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6. We'll look at it again. Okay? Um, let's, let's go with the story. Let me see. 2 Kings chapter four, 6. Uh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And then, uh, let's see. 2 Kings chapter 6. And it came to pass... Okay, let's look over here. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 11. Um, let's talk about Elisha and Gehazi, his servant, okay? Um, what happened was that they uh, they, they were going, uh, they were going to be surrounded. Basically, this is what the Lord's saying. And I want to speak this, this scripture because the Lord is saying it's important that we begin to hear and both see from heaven. And so, 2 Kings chapter 6 is about hearing prophets, hearing and seeing from heaven. Okay, so this is what we're going to do when we hear and see from heaven. Notice that this was the power that uh, Elijah had that, um, let's verse, look at verse 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And so notice uh, Elisha could hear so well that he could hear the plans of the king in his bed bedchamber of Syria, and he could warn the king of Israel where uh, where they were coming and where they were going and where not to go. This is where God is saying we need to begin to hear and see from heaven. And so this is how powerful we can hear. We can hear from a distance. So notice this. He says this. Uh, he begins to tell uh, the king of Israel all the plans of the king of Syria. Uh, verse 9, verse 10, And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God was, uh, told him and warned him of, and um, saved himself there, and not once but twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria, Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which one of you are for the kings of Israel? There, Elisha could hear so well that he could hear his plans, and he could warn uh, a king of a coming uh, a raid. Okay, this is what God is saying. This is where we can begin to hear in November to the point where we can know the plans of the enemy before they even happen, the Lord's saying. And this is especially for our prophets and apostles as we hear the plans of the enemy we can warn the body of Christ. We can begin to prophesy. We can begin to declare things uh, in advance before they even happen. And we can uh, uh, get the body of Christ out of a lot of trouble. And so verse 11, uh, the king was saying, wait, there must be somebody in my own camp that is telling against me. And verse 12, he says, uh, and one of the servants of the king said, none, my lord, O king, he said, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Literally, he was hearing what he was speaking, the plans he was speaking in his bedchamber. Verse 13, and he said, uh, Go spy where he is, and that I may send him and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Okay, so we're going to get to that in a minute. This is going to, I'm going to continue on with this story. But the second part of this prophetic word for November is God is going to send divine protection around his people. Okay, and that, we're going to go on back down, 2 Kings, all the way to the bottom. We're going to continue to talk about, first of all, he's hearing. Notice he's hearing. Mark it down, 2 Kings 6 and 12. And then we're going to get down to where he's seeing. And eyes are going to be open. Okay. And so right here. But when God is also speaking. The protection that he's going to bring. Is coming out of Exodus uh, 13 and 21. When he led the children of Israel. With a cloud by day. And a pillar of fire by night. This is God saying. That I'm going to lead the body. With a cloud of glory. That is a cloud of glory. And notice it was divine protection. Okay, so there was supernatural protection. And notice that it was even air, supernatural air conditioning in the daytime and supernatural heat by fire at night. So God can protect you out in the wilderness. God was supernaturally protecting them, just like Elijah was by the brook Cherith and many prophets that are being hid. God can bring and protect you even in that wilderness season. And the Lord is saying, I'm protecting many people. But he says, I'm also going to send out this pillar of cloud by day, uh, that is going to guide you, right? And pillar of fire by night. It'll lead you and the pillar of fire by night will show light to your path. 
God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, right? God said, Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in this season and every tongue that rises against you in judgment will be condemned. For God said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Romans 16, 20, God said, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And so get ready because God is going to give divine protection in November. Satan is going to be bruised under your feet and the body of Christ is going to advance into the promised land. The Lord is saying there's not going to be no more things holding you up. The devil is going to be put under your feet. This says the spirit of the Lord in November so you can move forward. Notice there was this divine protection. I want you to read these scriptures because it gives power uh, when you bring the Logos word. Let's look at this, Exodus 13, 21. Let's look at it real quick, Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord, look at this, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them by the way, right? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What was the thing, what was the path called back in the days of the disciples? It was called the way. The way is the way where we follow Jesus. The way, he is the truth, way, truth, and life. So it'll follow, it, it, it will lead you by the way that you should go. And by night in a pillar of fire, it gave light to go by day and night, right? Uh, and so it, it can make, give you light that you can travel through the dark seasons of your life, the Lord said. And this is supernatural fast. This is supernatural light. This isn't normal light. Exodus 14, 19, and look at this. Exodus 14, 19, we know, of course, uh, Exodus 14 is where he parts the Red Sea and the children of Israel go, go over dry shot. So the Lord has said, I'm parting some Red Seas in November that you're going to go over dry shot. The Lord is saying that I'm parting these seas. Now look at this. There's secrets to the supernatural in these books. Exodus 14, 19, look at this. Exodus 14, 19, and the angel of the Lord... Uh, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And listen to this. The pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So notice this supernatural protection of these angels and the glory of God. It'll move and go behind you between you and your enemies. So the Lord is saying, I'm sending angels to come up and move my cloud of glory and protect you even from behind that you can get to your destiny. This is what God's saying. Now keep keep reading Exodus 14, 29. I want you to look at this, Exodus 15, 19. Let's look at Exodus 14, 29. It says this, let's look at 24 first. It came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord... Uh, looked into the host of the Egyptians through the pillar, listen to this, and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. So notice God is fighting for you in this cloud. It's God's glory, okay? It's light, light and darkness. It says, uh, John said that the light and the darkness, the darkness can't comprehend the light, okay? So he's fighting the darkness, the Lord is saying. I'm coming through the cloud, and I'm fighting the darkness in your life so that you can move forward. And so the Lord is fighting, fighting them through the cloud. 2 Samuel 5, 24 says that uh, uh, David was in a war against the Philistines. Notice that he inquired of the Lord because the Lord is saying, we got to inquire of the Lord. Back then they used the Urim and the Thummim and they had the breastplate and the ephod. Uh, but now we got, we, 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 they had prophets back then too. Dave had a, uh, uh, King David had Gad the seer and he had Nathan the prophet. And so it's good to have seers and prophets. We'll get back to that in 2 Kings 6 in a minute. But he's saying here, 2 Samuel 5, 24, that God said, I'm going to do it another way this time. Because the first time they, they went and they spoiled the, the Philistines, they burnt all their uh, stuff, their idols. Okay, but the second time when God or David re inquired of God, he said, I'm going to do it something different. This time when you hear the sound of the going and the top of the mulberry trees, he says, then you will go because the Lord is going to go before you and he's going to spoil the Philistines. So it was like he told David to wait this time. Uh, there's going to be a sound of the going. You're going to hear it atop of the mulberry trees. Wait for that to happen and then go. So this is why it's important for us to hear the instructions from heaven. And speak according to what God is speaking, right? To align our words. This is what's going to happen in November. We're aligning our words with heaven's words, right? And so here's God protecting them supernaturally. Um, in Exodus 14, 29, all the way down. Notice that 
as 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 he goes, he, verse 26, he has Moses to stretch out his rod. He said, well, why are you just standing there? Stretch out your rod. So sometimes God will say, wait a minute, I'm fighting for you, but you got to also do something. Stretch your rod out also. I've given you something supernatural to use in your hand also. So, so stretch your rod out in November, the Lord is saying, and align your words with my words and begin to decree and prophesy things into existence, the Lord is saying, and line up with me and I'll fight for you, said the Lord. Verse 26 of Exodus 14, and the Lord said to Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his its strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea and it says and the waters uh, returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. So God said, I'm spoiling your enemies. I'm taking out your enemies. There's not going to be so much as one of them. The Lord is saying, I'm setting a, a boundary, a hedge of protection around my body in the month of November. And, and this is a divine supernatural wall of fire and glory and water, the Lord said. The washing of the water of the word. So it is when you stay in the word of God that you'll have protection, the Lord said, in the month of November. It is when you stay on fire for me when you stay on fire for your first love to not be lukewarm but be be hot because god said we can't have any lukewarm or cold christians we need some christians on fire like a burning fire and there will be a wall of fire zechariah 2 and 5 he god said this about zion and we are zion right we are zion he said he said i will be unto them as of a wall of fire all around them and i will be the glory in the midst of them and so god said this is my super tag uh, supernatural protection in my wall of fire exodus 15 19 look at this let's look at the scripture so we don't miss it he says this for uh the house of pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea and the lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them but the children of Israel went on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. So notice there was a wall of water all around them. That they went right through dry ground. But there was a supernatural wall of water of protection. So God said I'm given a wall not only of fire but of water. Which is the protection of my word says the Lord and my glory. Zechariah 2 and 5. I will be unto her as of a wall of fire all around her. And be the glory in the midst of her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So this supernatural protection, the Lord is saying, is another thing that's going to allow you to speak the word, prophesy in advance in the month of November, the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for that. Now I want you to, to, to understand that the Lord is saying there's something about your words, okay? Uh, many people have been speaking words against your own destiny, the Lord said. You've been speaking, you're talking about everybody speaking word curses against you, but the Lord has said you've been speaking word curses over your own life. And so this is the Lord said, we got to begin to pull down our word curses that we've spoken against our own life, the Lord is saying. And this is what the Lord is saying. I want you to, to hear this. Because I'm going to slow up and I'm going to keep uh, giving the scripture the Lord has given me so that you guys can get this full uh, uh, rhema word, but it's also out of the logo. So let's look at Jesus' teaching. Uh, Matthew 25, we'll look at uh, Matthew 12, excuse me, 25, Matthew 12, 28 through 30. And this is what he's talking about. He's talking about demon spirits. So I'm going to go a little deep here. I'm going to talk about demon spirits and casting out devils on here. So if you're apostolic and prophetic, you got to understand that if this is what God is saying, what your words uh, give, give power to demons, not only angels, but demons okay psalm 1 103 20, 21, he said bless the lord you host you ministers his that does his will and pleasure right and so the the angels come for your words look at this daniel 10 11 and 12 let's look at it first and then i'll go into this teaching okay daniel 10 let's look at it real quick so that you can catch this in the realm of the spirit hallelujah and then we'll go back to jesus teaching and we'll go over to matthew 12 okay so let's look at daniel chapter 10 and see what happened when Daniel was fasting and praying. 
he, he began to go into visions and dreams, right? And so God said there will be some visions and dreams happening major, and God will be instructing through visions and dreams also. But let's look at this. Uh, D Jesus also teaches us about this. Uh, and we'll go to that in a minute, okay? So let's look. Let me get to the scripture so I can see uh, what it says. God is sending angels to smite. Okay. Uh, and so let's look at this. Uh, Daniel 10 and 11 and 12. I stood trembling as the angel came down. Okay, so here he is praying, right? Uh, and he's he's praying and he's... So this can be why you're praying. Be careful how you're praying. Don't give the devil any 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 ammunition, okay? Don't speak against yourself even while you're praying. And so notice that when this angel, which I believe was Gabriel, came down, uh, he said... He said, Daniel 10, 12, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. He said, from the day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I have come for thy words. So notice angels come for our words. Okay, so when, we, when, we're, when we're speaking the word of God, angels come for the words. Psalm 103, 20, 21, we see that uh uh, Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about us to rescue and deliver us. But we see this in Daniel 10, 12, that as he was praying, the angel came and said, I have come for your words. So Jesus also teaches that demon spirits come for your words. Okay, so it's not only angels, but demons come for your word. That's why you have to be careful what you're speaking. Let's look at this. Um, uh, Matthew 12. Let's just go to Matthew 12. And I can teach it straight out of there so I don't miss anything. Let's go to Matthew 12 right now. And we'll look at it. Because I want to get all this in here. Because I'm really trying to help the body of Christ. I'm not wor I, I want to make sure this word is going to help people. So let's go over to Matthew chapter 12. And I wanna, want you to look at this. Mark this chapter down. Matthew 12. Because Jesus te teaches a lot about demonic spirits. He teaches a lot about our words. Okay. Uh, let's go here. I'm gonna, let's start at Matthew 12, and we'll go from verse 25, uh, and we're going to go all the way to 37 for a minute, okay? Uh, and Jesus knew their thoughts, okay? Notice Jesus was the Son of God, of course, but he's a prophet, also prophets, so he, he knew their thoughts. He could perceive, right? He knew that their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And so you cannot be divided against your own self or your own house or your own people. This is for pastors and leaders on here too. If there's people that in your own house, your church, or around you that are divided, he's saying this, that a, a city or a kingdom, or a house divided will not stand. It will come to desolation. And so you got, and this is what he's speaking, but he's also speaking about you're now the house. You're the temples of the Holy Spirit, right? So he's saying your house cannot be divided. You cannot be double-minded. That's what James called it. You And Jesus said that you your eye has to be single so that your full whole body will be full of light. He was talking about that the eye is the gateway to the soul, but it has you have to be single minded if that if that eye be dark how great is that darkness but if your eye be single that your whole body will be full of light so he was teaching about the mind being single don't be double minded you have to be single minded and your words have to line to god's word because you can actually speak against your own self your own destiny so verse 26 and satan if satan cast out satan he is divided against uh himself and then he says, how shall then his kingdom stand? So even Satan's kingdom can't stand if he divides himself. See? And so he's teaching about the supernatural. You guys got to catch this in the supernatural, right? And if I buy Beelzebub, because they were saying, the Pharisees are saying that he's casting out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils, right? And he's saying, listen, even Satan wouldn't divide his own kingdom. So surely I'm not, right? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judge. But mark this down, verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Then he says, or else how can one 
Enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good goods, except he first bind a strong man, and then he will spoil his house. So he's talking about casting out demons right here. We know if you don't bind a strong man, which there can be a strong man like a queen bee, you have to bind that queen bee to get the legion underneath her. So you've got to cast out that strong man, and Paul talked about pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, uh, Second Corinthians, uh, Corinthians uh, 10, 3-5, uh, and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So a strong man could be something, as can, it might not even be a demon, but it could be a stronghold in your mind. And you have to pull it down, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, right? I did a teaching on that a while back, but there's some powerful Greek words that are used in there. It's making a military expedition against a strong man. You literally have to make a, uh, and the word strateo in the Greek means to make a strategy to pull it down. So that's a whole nother teaching, but we're going to keep going on the words, uh, what he's talking about with words, right? And then he says, he that is not with me is against me. Mark this down. Uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew 12 and 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Now, is he talking about us? He could be, but right here he's talking about demons. You got to read the Bible in context. Okay, so you got to get back to context. He's talking about demon spirits uh, and, and angels. If those spirits aren't with him, they're against him. If those aren't true angels, they're fallen angels. Okay, so you can, he's talking about uh, uh, angels and fallen angels, then, which are different than demons, which are disembodied spirits of the Nephilim that come in your body. That's different than principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, and spiritual wickedness high places. Those are those are fallen angels, okay? But that's a whole nother demonology class. I'm not going to go in there. 31, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy. Then he goes on and talks about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. We don't want to get into that. But what I do want you to mark down here is this, okay? Uh, verse 34, 30, let's start with 35, 36, and 37. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, but an evil man or woman, right, out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Mark this down, 36 and 37, Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I say unto you that every idle word, come on somebody, that men shall speak, they will give an account of thereof in the day of judgment. So notice right there, every idle word that you speak, now, why is he saying that? Notice he's, you got to read the Bible in context. He's teaching about casting demon spirits out. He's saying, if you speak an idle word, these demons are going to catch it. Listen, they're coming for your words just like the angel in Daniel 10, 12 is. Okay, and so verse 37, that's why he says it. For by your words shall you be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. That's why he's saying, by your words you'll be justified, by your words you'll be condemned. So the Lord is saying in November, you got to watch what your words you're speaking, because the enemy has been coming, and, and also angels, but the enemy has been coming and getting your words. And so much of what is happening to you, the Lord has said, or much what manifestation isn't happening, or things that aren't happening, is because they're are certain words that you've spoken over your life and and so god said this is going to be reversed in november that i'm going to align you with my words and you're going to begin to prophesy declare and decree job 22 28 i'll decree a thing it shall be established the light is shine upon our way so then when you align your words in in november the god said now you're going to be able to move forward there's going to be a, a prophetic acceleration the lord is saying in the month of November. And so there's a lot of other teaching that I could go through with that. But I wanted to release mostly that. Uh, and that you're going to give an account of every idle word. So watch the idle words. By your words you should be justified. And by your words you're going to be condemned. Uh, uh, so, so God is also sent, sending his angels in dreams and visions, Numbers 12, 6 through 7. God said, I'll make myself, if there be a prophet among you, I myself will make myself known in a vision, and I will speak to them in a dream. Numbers uh, 12 and 7, with my servant is not, Moses is not so, but I'll speak to him face to face and mouth to mouth, not in dark sayings or speeches, but, and he will also see the similitude of God, is what he said. So many prophets and apostles on here, that God is speaking to apostles and prophets, mouth to mouth, face, face to face, that you know God so intimately, that God is, is not only you know God's acts, like Israel knew God's acts, but Moses knew God's ways. You 
you know God's ways and God's saying, I'm not even going to have to speak to you in dreams and simultudes and visions anymore because I can speak to you face to face, mouth to mouth. And the Lord says, you will even be able to see my, my, uh, the, 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 my simultude, my shape, right? Who I am. You'll know who I am. And so God is revealing himself. Apocalypse is, is meaning the unveiling of Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ is coming. I prophesy in November like never before. Things that have been hidden from ages and generations, Colossians 126, but are now going to be revealed. It says Romans 16, 24, 25, and 26, that there, there are things that were hidden, but are now going to be known through the prophetic scriptures or the scriptures of the prophets. And so God said, I'm opening up the first five books of the Bible. I see Genesis, Exodus, the Pentateuch, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are being opened up. Secrets to the prophets are coming through those first five books. I see the prophetic books, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jesus also says that it is in the book of Nehemiah there are secrets. And the Lord said, I'm also opening up the Gospels that the teachings of Christ are coming back to the church. And the Lord said, there are secrets. What I just gave you one in the teachings of Christ that are coming back to the church. Apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors, teachers, and apostles begin to teach your congregation once again, says the Spirit of the Lord. My teaching, says the Lord Jesus Christ, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I will reveal myself, says the Lord, in the book of Revelation. So I'm opening up my book of Revelation. I'm going to reveal myself to my apostles and prophets, says the Lord. Surely the Lord God will do nothing lest he first reveal the secret unto his servants, the prophets. And so God said, I'm going to reveal my serv to my servants, the prophets, in November. Su supernatural secrets, says the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you for this word. We're going to continue. This is what the Lord is saying also to the body of Christ. In November, take risks. Make moves by faith. Quit staying stagnant. The Lord says you've got to step out on faith and walk by faith, not by sight. The Lord said in November to begin to take risks supernaturally. And God said, I will back you up. you got to step out in November, the Lord said. And God is going to favor and reward your faith and obedience, says the Lord, in November as you take certain risks. I see 2 Kings 7, 3-20. I want you to read that scripture. It is about the, the four lepers who were standing before the gate of Samaria and there was a famine in the land and they then they were looking into the Syrian camp and they said, well, we're going to stay. We're going to sit here and die anyway. We might as well just go in and see what happens. If they kill us, they kill us. And so some people are at the, at the point of the four lepers in 2 Kings uh, Second Kings chapter 7, verse 3 through 20, and they said as they went in, do you know what? They ended up finding uh, that the Syrians were gone and they found all their spoils. Uh, and they were able to take that back and feed all of Samaria, which was in a, a, a famine. And so they got much favor also. So many things were happening because they took they said, you know what? We can't stay here and die anymore. We got to keep moving, right? And so also the Lord is saying, uh, that there are going to be uh, a supernatural healings uh, and, and cleansing. I want you to look at Second Kings chapter five, the story of Naaman. Okay, I want you to read the story of Naaman in Second Kings chapter five. Notice that that he was cleansed, but God gave him certain prophetic instructions through the prophet how to be cleansed. And notice he al almost lost his blessing because of pride. And so the Lord said, I'm going to heal people supernaturally of, of diseases and a lot of things and ailments, but don't miss out on your blessings because of pride. Naaman almost missed it. Uh, and I want you to read that story. I should go through a lot of these stories and slow down so you guys can really see it. Um, but you can go back and read it. But here's what I want you to show you in that story. Let's look at it. 2 Kings chapter 5. Read that, that story of the lepers. 2 Kings chapter 7. Uh, and just stay in that whole book of 2 Kings. There's a lot in there. The Lord has been showing me this last week. Um, and I could go through a lot more. But let's look at this real quick. 2 Kings chapter 5. Notice that uh, Naaman. He, he was a mighty man. He was a great man. He was honorable because... Uh, uh, by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, 
but he was a leper. So the Lord is saying there's a lot of mighty men and women on here, but you have some kind of ailment. You know, he was a mighty man, but he had leprosy. Come on, somebody. Somebody has leprosy in the spirit. You know, you have some kind of disease or some kind of uh, a thing in your body that, you know, you just, you, you don't like. You know what I mean? But God said, I'm coming. I'm sending the prophet, but I'm sending my spirit to heal in the month of November, the Lord said. But don't miss your healing and blessing by being being picky the lord said so notice what happens in the story uh and this notice that they the syrians had gone in they took this little maid uh she was um and she waited on naaman's wife verse 3 second kings 5 3 and she said unto her mistress would god my lord uh were with the prophet that is in Samaria, that he would recover himself of the leprosy. And see, so also that God is giving supernatural miracles and healings through the prophet's ministry. Prophets on here, uh, prophetesses, apostles, God is healing supernaturally. Stretch out your hand because God is going to be speaking to many of the prophets and prophetesses that he's going to be healing people supernaturally. Um, if you've never moved in the gifts of healings and the workings of miracles, this ministry, we do it all the time, but some people haven't. But the God's said that I'm pouring out such a supernatural faith in the month of November that prophets that didn't work in these healings and miracles before, you will move in healings and miracles, I prophesy, in the month of November. So look at this, uh, Second uh, Kings 5 and 4, and one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus says the maid that is in the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go, to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him uh, 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, and 10 changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king. Notice he, he didn't go to the prophet first. He went to the king because he, he really didn't even understand the supernatural. He was a heathen, okay? But God still honored him just like it was with Cornelius, how God sent Peter to Cornelius because he said that his alms had come up to heaven. So God is rewarding even many uh, 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 heathens that, you know, God will save the heathen. He wants to save the sinner, uh, and so he, he, he literally did a miracle for a heathen king. Uh, and, and it was because he was a mighty man and he had done something. Notice that uh, uh, for Second Kings 5, 1, that he was honorable but because of him, the Lord gave him deliverance to Syria. And so God remembers things, even if they're not believers, God remembers things that unbelievers do and he rewards unbelievers. And so notice even Jesus says uh, that the prophet wasn't sent but to Naaman and to a woman at Zarephath when he was talking to uh, the, the Pharisees and Jews who didn't even believe he was Messiah, he, would, he told them, you know what, uh, in the days of Elijah that he was only sent uh, to a few people, right? Uh, and they, were, they weren't even believers, right? And so verse 6, he brought this letter to the king. He didn't know really where to send it to. The king ripped, uh, uh, tore his uh, you know, uh, tore his clothes and said, wait, who am I? I'm not God. I can't heal you, right? Uh, and he said this. Uh, and so Elijah, the man of God, had heard, verse 8, that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come uh, now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So God said that some people are going to know there's a prophet among them. Uh, look at this in and, and, and Ezekiel 33 and 3. It said they'll know there has been a prophet among them. So God is going to... Um, uh, he's going to, you know, give your ministry confirmation. God's going to confirm a lot of prophetic ministries in the month of November. And so he said, "There, this is why you will know that there's a prophet among you. Verse 9, for Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha uh, sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash thyself in the Jordan and your flesh shall come again to thee and thou will be clean. Now notice... Elisha didn't even come out. He didn't even listen. He didn't even come out. And here's what Naaman expected. He expected him to come out and honor him because he was, a, you know, the captain of the Lord's, the king's host, right? He was basically an army uh, general, right? And so, but Naaman was wroth. Now, this is what the Lord is saying to watch out for people that are trying to get healing and miracles in the month of November. He said, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover me of this leprosy. Verse 12, and not 
uh, are not Abana and Farifa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Notice this. He's saying, you told me to go wash in that dirty Jordan River because the Jordan River was known to be dirty, right? He's saying, aren't there rivers in Damascus that are cleaner? So he was very picky about how God wanted to give him the miracle through the prophet, right? So the Lord is saying in the month of November, don't be picky about how God is going to do this. He may require you to do something. He may send a prophet and give you certain instructions that don't make any sense. Uh, 2 Kings 5 and 13, and, he, and his servants came, even his servants were knowing that, wait a minute, you you better you better not get prideful here, because uh, he was mad, watch your anger, so God is saying, watch your anger and your rage, right, and his servants came uh, near, and spake unto him, and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee uh, to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it, how much rather than when he saith, wash and be clean. Then went he down and, listen, dripped himself seven, because he told him to dip himself seven times, which is a number of perfection. So sometimes there's prophetic instructions that you have to follow uh, very closely to get your healing or miracle or your breakthrough, right? And so he said, I went down, I dropped, dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Hallelujah. So notice again, it was by the word of the prophet that God heard the word of the prophet. It was why as the prophet was speaking, God heard those kind of, those words and he, he honored the word of the prophet. And so know that the Lord is saying that these miracles and healing and cleansing are coming, but we we wait. We can't get prideful. We can't we can't worry about what what, what the prophetic instructions because maybe it's going to be something that God requires for us to get our healing right. Um, um but God's going to give us the the sure word of prophecy. He said for this. Now let's look again at Second Kings six and seventeen and eighteen when I'm talking about all these uh the God giving us protection in the month of November, but also hearing and seeing from heaven. Notice in uh second Kings six is when he could hear the plans of the king in his bedchamber, but look at uh second Kings six six, sixteen and seventeen and eighteen. He answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that are before them. And so this is when the king was coming for Elijah uh, and Gehazi because he was telling the king of Israel the plans. And so, but God supernaturally protected him. And watch how he does this. There's certain secrets in this I want to show you. And so as the servant rose up in the morning, verse 15, the man of God was risen early and gone forth. Behold, there was an army can pass the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do he was scared so here he is being compassed about with chariots uh, a whole army and the lord said many people on here feel like they're compassed about they're overwhelmed they don't they don't know lord how can i get through this trial right i want you to read this 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 story second king 6 16 and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that are with them and so God is saying, there are more for you than there are against you. Verse 17, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open the eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots, all of fire all around Elisha. So notice Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. So, so it is the prophet praying and asking God or, or basically command you, me, what to do. It wasn't God telling him what to do. He was saying, he was praying and saying, God, do this. And so God is saying in November, you, you can't just ask God what to do. You have to, you have to say, God, do this. I'm praying, do this. So he says, open the eyes of my servant that he may see. And notice he did it. And then everybody reads that scripture. So this is to see divinely so you can see there's more horses and chariots of fire all around you to protect you that's part of that word that god sent in divine supernatural protection but look at verse second king 6 18 after that and when they came down to him elisha prayed unto the lord one more time and said smite the people 
I pray thee with blindness, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. There we go again. According to the word of the prophet, he even smote them with blindness. Remember the apostle Paul did that. I believe it was to, to, to uh, Simon the sorcerer or one of them over there. Or, or LMS maybe, the false prophet. I got I to gotta look at the story. But notice that he, God even heard the word of the prophet again when he said, smite these guys with blindness. So he got him out of something supernaturally all these horses and chariots were around him his eyes uh, the his servant got open because he prayed but he still wasn't out of trouble so notice elijah said now smite the the enemy with blindness and so i prophesy god is smiting your enemies with blindness also that god said you're going to overcome your enemies in, in in the month of november and there's a there's a prophetic word at the end for that too but i want to stay in the story verse 19 and elijah said unto them this is not the way either is this the city follow me and i will bring you to the man whom you seek but he led them to Samaria. So he, God blinded the mind that it was even Elijah. And so God can blind the mind of your enemies that they don't even notice you. They can't even find you. Here they were following the prophet and they're looking for the prophet and he's right in front of them, leading them right into the enemy's camp. Look at this in verse 20. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elijah said, Lord, now open the eyes of these men. So notice everything that, that the prophet commanded, God did. So, so this is a lesson. You guys can speak things, especially prophets and apostles on here, and things will happen. God will hear your word. Okay? And he says, uh, he opened the eyes of the men, and they may see, and the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Keep your, keep your mark right there, because there's something on the rest of this story uh, that we're going to get to right here at the end. Okay? And so, this is... This is where God's saying, now we're going to hear, we're going to see from heaven. Notice I showed you where all the divine seeing was. Notice that we have to speak our words according to God's words. Uh, notice that Jesus warned that every idle word you'll give an account of. By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Notice in Daniel 10, 12, that the angel came for uh, Daniel's words. And so notice how important words are spoken. And, and so we're going to pull down word curses at the end of this. Um, and so I, I was speaking, also God is exonerating people in the realm of the spirit. There's going to be a divine exoneration. God is bringing justice and judgment. He's also re bringing retribution to the enemies. And he's righting all wrongs in the month of of November. The Lord is saying also clemency is coming. There are going to be many, many prophetic words I see. There's going to be multiplication, miracles. We'll go over that in a minute. But I also see God doing things like bringing people out of prison. He's going to deliver people and give people that have had uh, false accusations in prison like to have been falsely accused and they're going to be released in the month of November. Uh, divine clemency. Uh, there's going to be a divine exoneration. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm opening doors, uh, uh, prison doors in the month of November and people are coming out, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Money miracles and multiplication, the Lord said. 2 Kings 4, 3-7, uh, the woman of the wives of the prophets, I just read that in the beginning where, uh, where her oil increased as she went and borrowed the vessels and she poured it out. That means that she had already something in her house and she borrowed a little bit. She might have to borrow something to make something in the month of November, but your oil is going to multiply, the Lord said, just like the loaves and fishes uh, multiplied. And so we'll see that Jesus taught us that of course with the loaves and the fishes and so we see this divine multiplication we see money i see money miracles coming to pay debts god said money miracles are coming in november to pay debts a lot of people in debt but god said money miracles are coming trust me as you speak and you prophesy to your situation you can speak and things will happen god said i'm going to call those things that be not as though they were I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quicken dead things. Romans 4, 17, and call those things that be not as they were in November, the Lord's saying. Hallelujah. And just like we've seen with the women, the widow at Zarephath, 1 Kings 17, 8 through 16, uh, that as she, as Elijah said, give me a little uh, a cake first and a, and a drink of water. And notice after that, by his word, notice it was the word of the prophet that, uh, that her oil multiplied and it paid, uh, it, it didn't waste old for a whole a uh, year it says actually hallelujah so we see all this multiplication 
that Jesus taught us all this in Luke 9, 13, John 6, 9, with the loaves and the fishes. Uh, and so the Lord is saying that there's going to be a divine multiplication of money miracles as we speak and line our words with God's word in the month of November, the Lord said. And also, I see a month of the overcomers. The Lord is saying that we are going to overcome in the month of November. Hallelujah. We are overcomers and we'll be overcoming. Hallelujah. And uh, notice this. It says, you overcome evil with good. By so doing, you will cause coals to be put on the head of your enemies. Uh, and you, they'll have to become allied with you and become at peace with you. And so this is exactly what happened when you continue to read this story in 2 Kings chapter 6. Was that they literally, uh, they came into, when, uh, the, they led the Syrians into the camp of the enemy, into Israel's camp. And verse 21, and the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them or shall I not smite them? In verse 22, he's, he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Notice overcoming evil with good. So God said in the month of November, we got to overcome evil with good. This is what the Apostle Paul said, that you heap coals upon your enemy by overcoming evil with good. So here, this didn't make sense. You guys really got to uh, study this, this chapter, 2 Kings 6. Why did he lead him into the enemy's camp? They could have took the Syrians, which they were out at war with them, but he said no. And then uh, even the jo Jehoram, which was the king of Israel, uh, was aligned with Elijah at that time. And he said, uh, my father, should, I, should we smite him? And he said no, but set bread and water before them. Verse 23, and he prepared a great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Look at that. They came no more into the land of Israel. So it silenced their enemy. So the Lord, just like Jesus taught, you overcome evil with good. Matthew chapter um, 5 and Luke chapter 6. You turn the other cheek. So uh, as we overcome evil with good, literally it caused them to turn their wrath away from them. And they no more attack them. And so overcoming evil with good in the month of November, the Lord said, you'll heap coals upon your enemies. The Lord said, now to, to, to overcome evil with good, feed your enemy. And the Lord said that this will overcome. This is what is going to overcome in the month of November. Uh, this is what we see if that story, we see it with J.O. Ram, 1 Kings 6, 22 to 23. Uh, he fed the enemy. At the command of Elisha the prophet, right? So the prophet's uh, instructions are important. It's important to listen to the instructions of the prophets. As we hear more from heaven, God's giving more uh, instructions to the apostles and prophets on this line. And God is saying that in this month that he is releasing more and more as we line our words up with heaven's words. So this is the month of November that we are coming into a divine alignment with God's words. He's protecting us supernaturally. He's going to be that wall of fire all around us. The glory in the midst of us. He's exonerating us. He's bringing us divine justice. And, and uh, uh, he's bringing judgment on, on certain of the enemies. He's multiplying miracles. Look at that. Uh, um, the miracle of, of Naaman being cleansed of leprosy. So the Lord said there's many going to get cleansed of sicknesses and diseases. 2 Kings chapter 5. But make sure... That, that that you don't get prideful and you miss that miracle, says the Lord. And so notice that, that story in Naaman. And Naaman was very picky about how the prophetic instructions came forth and what he had to do to get the miracle. So the Lord said to be uh, uh, on the lookout so that we don't get over, uh, you know, prideful. We stay humble because God's going to show us things that, that we can do and instructions that we can get our miracles. 
uh, in the month of November, I prophesy in Jesus' name. So, Father, right now, I seal this word right now. I thank you, Father, for it right now. Right now, right now, Father, I pull down every word curse that people have spoken over their own lives, God. We we take captive every thought right now. Uh, we pull down strongholds, cast down imaginations, those, those imaginations that the enemy has put into our mind and caused us to believe certain lies. And notice that in 2 Kings uh, chapter 22, we see uh, Micaiah, that he would only speak according to the word of the Lord. And uh, we I also see that there's a lot of Micaiah prophets coming out uh, that are only speaking what God says in the month of November. And God is bringing them out of the cave. But notice that Micaiah would only speak what the Lord had said. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you right now that, that we're only speaking what you say and notice that there was a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets and so even when when they called for uh micaiah he said you know what uh they tried to coax him to only say what the other 400 prophets of the groves were saying which said go ahead and go up to ramoth gilead and you will um overtake them but Micaiah said, I will only speak what thus says the Lord, okay? And he went and, and he, he first said, oh, hey, go ahead and go up. And he said, how many times do I got to tell you not to lie to me? Because him and Ahab had uh, a fight because Ahab was a wicked king. And then he finally said, well, I saw all the host of heaven. And he said, I saw the Lord standing in the throne room. And, I, and the Lord said, what spirit will go forth and be a lying spirit in all the mouths of the prophets, right? And a spirit came came forth and said, I will be a lion spirit. So notice there was a lion spirit sent forth and God approved of it into the mouths of all the prophets. And then when finally Micaiah prophet prophesied that I seen in a vision, all the hosts uh, of Israel scattered like sheep. Uh, so he was saying that you're not going to, you're not going to overcome and that Ahab was going to get killed. So he prophesied something correctly, but they still threw him in prison and said, uh, feed him with the bread of and water of affliction and, and lest I come back. And so notice he prophesied something right. Uh, Zedekiah hit him and said, where did the, the spirit of the Lord go from you to me to, to, from me to you, right? But notice why I'm speaking this is because there can be lion spirits. And I see that the, as I was praying, the Lord was saying that a lot of lion spirits have been sent out and lying, uh, coming and lying in people's ears. It's a, it's a spirit, if you look up it in the Hebrew, it's a spirit of, 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 of deception. Uh, and so I see a spirit of deception coming into uh, the, the ears of the prophets. And so right now, God, we pull down those strongholds, cast down imagination, Nations. We bind those lying spirits in the name of Jesus. We command them to go come out of your the ears and the minds of your people and out of your prophets right now in Jesus name. We have a name above every name at that name of Jesus. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue will confess to the glory of God, the father in the heavens, the earth and under the earth. We command those lying spirits to come out of the ears and the minds of your people in the name of Jesus. We command them to go. We pull down strongholds, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Right now, God, we pull every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus right now. God, we align our words with heaven right now. I align my words with heaven right now. God, we align the words of the people on here with heaven right now. God, we pull down every word curse, every, every false lie of the enemy me that we've spoken against our own lives against our own destiny we call fire from heaven god let the fire of the holy ghost burn up every false word spoken in the name of jesus god i thank you right now we pull down those strongholds right now we cast down those imaginations that the enemy's been trying to put in our minds putting false lies in our minds we rebuke that spirit right now in the name of jesus we commanded to come out of the minds of your people right now and i pray god that their words will begin to align with the words from heaven from the throne room God I pray if Fetha let the heavens be open and the angels of God begin to ascend and descend and bring the glory of the Lord into the midst of your people God that they can hear from heaven I pray for a divine Jacob's ladder uh, Genesis 28 12 17 John 1 51 to come down into their houses into their churches into their families God and they begin to hear from you God and they begin to speak according to your word they begin 
begin to prophesy, declare and decree things and bring them into existence. The Lord said from from right now, from Rosh Hashanah until the end of the year, that this is a supernatural time. It's like there's a frozenness in time where God allows us to speak certain things that time is kind of stood still until the Gregorian calendar changes uh, on our side because it's already the Jewish New Year. And the Lord said in that time is a Cairo supernatural time that you can prophesy and declare and speak things into existence. And God said, I will align my word with your word and I will speak from heaven, Romans 4, 17. God said, I'll quicken the dead things, and I'll call it those things that be not in your life as though they were, says Lord. Said, as you speak by faith and walk into your faith, take risks in the month of November, the Lord said. Walk by faith, not by sight. Step out on faith in November, the Lord is saying. It's time for the body of Christ to go forward and he's going to split the Red Sea in front of us. I see the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The Lord said, I'm going out before you. Second uh, Samuel 5 24, I hear the sound of the going in the top of the mulberry trees. And the Lord said, I'll go out before you. Thank you, Jesus, that you're going out before us, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're making a way and that, 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 that there's a wall of fire all around us. There's a wall of water all around us and the washing of the word and the wall of glory the Lord said my glory the knowledge of my glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea Habakkuk 2 14 and the Lord said Joel 2 28 and the last days will come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions and your older men will dream dreams I will pour out of my spirit on my handmaids and my hand servants and they shall prophesy the Lord said begin to prophesy into your destiny begin to prophesy aside forward the Lord said I will line my words with your words you don't have to wait for me to speak the Lord said you begin to decree a thing it shall be established and the light will shine upon your way Job 22 28 the Lord said I will line my words with your words prophets I will begin to speak as you speak I will carry things to pass as you speak them says the Spirit of God hallelujah hallelujah we thank you Lord for this word we thank you God we seal it right now in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we thank you for it God we praise and worship you in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Father. We worship you in November, God. Thank you that you're preparing the way through November, through December, and into 2021. The Lord said he's already given me a word for 2021 as I'm preparing it. It's downloading now. But God said now we're about ready to walk uh, through the troubled waters of COVID-19, through the troubled waters of economical troubles, through the troubled waters of an election coming up tomorrow. The Lord said there will be much corruption around this this election I prophesy the Lord said that there will be many things that come out in this election uh, that shows people what is happening in the in the, in the government uh, and there's much corruption happening uh, and I don't want to speak specifically, but there's something uh, on the side of a scandal on the side of the Democrats that is coming to light, the Lord said, in the name of Jesus. So I prophesy that, that there is going to be a lot of civil unrest coming uh, tomorrow after this election. The Lord, there will be there will be scandals and there will be corruption. There will be civil unrest and more riots, the Lord said. Uh, and so we have to hide ourselves, as it were, for a little while, Isaiah 28, until the ignorance indignation passes over so there will be some indignation i prophesy in the month of november but the lord said hang on to my unchanging hand hang on uh, to the name of jesus and use the name and the blood of the yeshua jesus hamashiach says the spirit of god in jesus name god bless everybody i love you in jesus name go back and listen to this word and also all the scriptures are written up there especially over here on facebook periscope if you want to look at all the scriptures that were uh, preach go ahead and go over on Facebook James P. Milne uh, and JPM Ministries International Facebook page and you can see the scriptures there was a lot more but I'll release those things uh, on another day and so God bless everybody I love you in Jesus name we'll talk to you later God bless you